Now let's talk about the two-way ANOVA. Two-way ANOVA is used to test the hypothesis, again, that all the means of all populations are equal against an alternative hypothesis that at least one mean is different. But this time, we have two independent variables, not one. Using an example, let's say we want to test the miles per gallon in the cars based on import status and the type of car. This would give us what we call a two by three design. You can see the table here where we have luxury, sports, and economy, as well as domestic and imported. I have three levels of one, two levels of another, giving us six total boxes, and therefore we have our two by three design. So there are six means that are going to be compared. Now, different software requires you to format the data differently. For Excel, we need to format the data like this. So we'll have our three columns of data, luxury sports economy, and on the left, we will label the start of the first group and the start of the second group. Now, using the add-in in Excel, there are two options for a two-way ANOVA, one with, with replication, one without replication. With replication indicates that for each of the variables, the experiment is conducted for a different group of data. So for example, males and females might take two separate tests, so the groups are independent of each other. And then Excel can do what's called an interaction effect analysis, which we'll talk about later as well. So if you have two different groups and they're independent, you will be using the with replication. And this is the one you'll most commonly use as the option in Excel. Without replication indicates that the analysis isn't being replicated for a separate group. So for example, consider a group of patients who take drug one and then take drug two three months later. This is gonna be a two-way ANOVA without replication. So another way to look at this would be that one group performing multiple tasks such as tests. I take the test in one period and then I take a test later on after something has happened, and I want to determine if there is an effect. But if you do this, you cannot compute interaction effects. Again, we'll discuss interaction effects a little bit later. So using the two-way ANOVA function in Excel from the data that we had just before, uh, we can see that we get a very large ANOVA table. The columns are the type of car. So that's why you'll see uh, where it says columns down below those are the luxury, the sports, and the economy. And the sample represents the import status because those are the rows that are going down. And we could see that it gives us a summary of domestic and imported. And down below in the ANOVA table, it says sample. So now what we're looking for is we want to take a look at the uh, p-values here. Again, we could go through the same f uh, statistic calculations and so forth that we did earlier in the earlier 13 modules. We don't need to do that. We're going to actually just do uh, the p-values here. So the way we interpret this is this. We have the p-values for the sample and the p-values for the column. And what we're looking for is, is there a main effect for either the import status or the type of car? So our null hypothesis for the import status is, is that the means of the import status are the same. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of those means are different. Since the import status is our sample, we will look at the sample p-value, which here is 0.51. Since the p-value is greater than 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and therefore we can state that we have no effect for the import status of the car. Now looking at the columns, again, we'll have our null hypothesis that the means of the type of car are the same. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one is different. And we follow along the columns line, and we see the p-value there. And so the p-value is very small because that's times 10 to the negative 21st power. So that's less than 0.05. And so therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis and say we have evidence of an effect of the type of car on miles per gallon. Now we have what's called an interaction effect. And here, using the same uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, we can run through whether or not it's significant or not. And here, it is not significant because it's greater than 0.05. But really, what does an interaction effect mean? So let's take a look at two charts. If we look at a chart, we can see that from domestic to imported, the line goes up. And our delta between the overall mean and imported is 0.194 and between domestic it's negative 0.194. So it looks like there's an effect here, but 
Again, we didn't really see that. So on the right side, we have the car type. And we can see that the deltas range from negative 2.5 to 5.9 against the overall average of 20.167. So what's interesting here is that what we're looking for is, is there a difference? And you can see that the numbers are small on the left for the deltas, and they're slightly larger on the right. So be careful when you're looking at graphs because the graphs could be deceiving. However, when we start putting things together and we're looking for an interaction effect, we're looking to see if the levels of one factor influence the levels of another factor. When we map the two together, where we have luxury, sports, and economy, and the blue line represents domestic and the orange line represents imported, we can see that they're basically the same. And this is why domestic and imported had really no effect. But what if we had a different example? What would an interaction effect look like? Well, an interaction effect might look something like this. We have males and females who take drug and drug one and drug two. And in drug one, we could see that the males go from 98.5 to 100.25. And females start at 100.2 and go down to 99.1. An interaction effect would occur if you see the lines cross because it means that there is probably a main effect for something, but that the effect is inverted when you have a different factor like male or female. So in the first effect, we saw that the, the drug of one may not have done anything to reduce the temperature of males of, uh, for females as opposed to males, but drug two seemed to do better for females than it did for males. And so there was this interaction effect. And therefore, this, these are the types of things that we look for. Now, another notion in, in ANOVA are blocking variables, which are used to test or control the, for an effect that shouldn't exist. This is nothing more than adding another variable into the two-way ANOVA. The only thing is, is that we're hoping that there is no effect for this. So in other words, we've included a second variable, but our assumption is, is that this should have no effect. We're just testing to make sure that it doesn't have the effect. And this is what we call controlling for a variable. So let's say we wish to include demographic information in our no sound, jazz sound, and white noise experiment. We include male and female as a control variable, another variable, because we hope that that has no effect on our manipulation. When we put that in into our ANOVA, we end up with something that looks like this. We end up with the sample, which again are rows, male and female, has no effect. It's not statistically significant. It's greater than 0.05. Our columns still have an effect, and that's good because that's less, that p-value is less than 0.05, which means we still have a main effect for the sound. And finally, we have no interaction effect because that interaction effect is greater than, the p-value is greater than 0.05. So therefore, gender has no effect while the sound still has the effect. Therefore, we can state that there is a main effect for sound while controlling for gender. Finally, we'll just talk about three-way ANOVA. The three-way ANOVA tests the hypothesis against three variables of two or more levels. So here we might have a, type, a, a separate type of car of hybrid and gas. So we really can't do this in Excel, but we can do it in other statistical packages. So we're just referencing it here. So let's say we wish to test the miles per gallon based on import status, type of car, and hybrid or gas. That gives us three independent variables. And so therefore, when we put this together, we will have uh, a 12 means that we're comparing, 